Hello class, today we're going to start a new unit. So we're going to take a look at what's happening in the medieval period and we're going to be talking about something called feudalism. So we'll be talking about European feudalism. You might be familiar with some of the things that took place during this time. This is the time where there's castles, knights, kings, queens, got a damsel in distress over there. So you're probably familiar with some of the things. So you're probably wondering where is Europe and what is feudalism? Well here is a map of the world and the United States is over here. Europe is right up here. We'll zoom in. Some of the countries that you might be familiar with that are in Europe are France, England, Great Britain, Germany, Italy, and Spain. So feudalism is a political and economic system that provided a social structure in the Middle Ages. Now we have our own social structure and economic structure today. Uh, but this is what they had in the Middle Ages. And it was political because that determined who was in charge and it was economic because it explained how people got the things that they needed. It existed in the medieval period or it's also known as the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages were at its peak during the year between the year 900 AD and 1500 AD and that really is between 1100 and 500 years ago so it was a long time ago. So to start with there were kings and queens just like in uh, fairy tales there were kings and queens. Fairy tales are kind of based on facts. Now, kings and queens uh, are also known as royalty. A government with a king or queen in charge is called a monarchy. And the king or queen is known as the monarch. They had a really good life. There are some kings and queens around today. The Queen of England is called Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain, which is another name for England. Uh, it's Great Britain. She doesn't have the kind of power that kings used to have. They're mostly just for uh, ceremony. And there's the royal family. So there's the king, uh, the queen and her husband. And then there's some princes here. There's Prince Charles and his sons. And they're also princes. One of those boys will be the king one day. Now, underneath the king and queen, there are a whole um, group of nobles. Now, nobles had a lot of power and a lot of money. They also had titles like Duke, Baron, Earl, and Count. Uh, an example might be Charles, the Duke of York, or Count Dracula. He would have been a, uh, a noble in Transylvania. They were rich and pow powerful. They had nice clothes. They ate really good food. And they lived in big houses. They had fun hobbies and sports. Here's a man doing falconry. And here, is, here are some guys playing chess and some form of handball. Okay, underneath the nobles, there were a, a group of people, a class of people uh, known as the knights or vassals. Okay. You're from, probably familiar with knights, knights in shining armor. They were soldiers riding on horseback. Their main weapon was a sword. And they also did jousting. You're probably quite familiar with knights and some of their stories. They were also known as vassals. Okay, the word vassal means it's somebody that received land from someone else, a wealthy noble, and gave their promise to work for and obey the Lord, who was also the noble. So they got land from the noble, and, and in return they promised to work for that noble and do what they wanted. And usually, because they were a soldier, it was go to war for them. They lived by a code of chivalry. Chivalry is a code of conduct that expects you to behave honorably, courteously, and to protect the weak. There's a whole list of virtues to follow in the code of chivalry. And here's kind of an example. There's exhibiting courage in word and deed, avenge the wronged. Uh, the wronged. There's, a, there's a whole list that you can follow. And here's a knight 
being courteous to a lady. Now you can't just become a knight, you have to be knighted by the king or queen. And then you get the title, sir, uh, before your name. There was an order of knights called the Templar Knights, and they were very rich and powerful. They actually started an early form of banking, and they were involved in the Crusades. Here are some modern-day knights. There are still knights, and the queen still makes knights, but they're not typically soldiers. For instance, this is, these are actors, and this is a singer in a rock band. That's Obi-Wan Kenobi in the movie, but that's Sir Alec Guinness. He's an actor. This is Sir Ian uh, McKellen, and he's Gandalf the Wizard. And there's Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney of the Beatles, a rock band. Okay, underneath the knights and vassals were the serfs or peasants. This was kind of the lowest social class. They weren't wealthy. They were farmers and laborers who lived on land owned by someone else, like a knight or noble. They were bound to the land and could not leave without permission. What that means, being bound to the land, it almost sounds like being tied to the land. They're not tied up, it just means that they can't go anywhere without permission. They had very simple homes with thatched roofs and made out of logs and mud, bricks. They worked on the farms around the big estates. Okay, their life was not as comfortable as the classes above them. They worked hard in the fields, they plowed and planted seeds, uh, they harvested the crops by hand. They didn't have uh, fancy machinery to do this. They did a lot of the work by hand. They lived in very small houses, probably a fire in the middle of the room to heat the place and to cook on with a hole in the ceiling for the smoke to go out. This might be uh, a picture of a peasant's house. In the middle you'll see a bed. And over here in the corner of the same room are the farm animals and where they sleep. So to give you an idea of how simple the peasant's life was. Now another group that was very important was the Catholic Church. And that was really the only Christian church in medieval Europe was the Catholic Church run by the Pope. Kind of looks like Santa Claus, but it's the Pope. The Pope lives in Vatican City, which is in Rome. Okay? The Pope had a lot of power. Kings usually did what the Pope wanted because they didn't want to be cut off from the church. And the Pope could do that if he wanted to. Kings wanted to have the Pope's blessing to be able to do what they wanted. If the Pope agreed, then it was probably okay to do. This is the time in the Middle Ages where they built these beautiful cathedrals. This is Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France. Now, it was built, construction began in 1163 AD, about the beginning of the High Middle Ages. You probably recognize the name Notre Dame from the uh, movie The Hunchback of Notre Dame that took place at that cathedral. Okay, the church was very wealthy as well. They had a lot of money and so they had a lot of power. The structure, social structure, might look like this. The peasants at the bottom, it was the largest group of people. More peasants than there were knights and there were more uh, knights than there were nobles and more nobles than there was the king. The groups get smaller the higher up you go, but the, at the higher up, up you go, the richer they become and the more power that they have. So there's peasants, knights or vassals, church officials and nobles, both very powerful, and then the king or monarch at the top. Here's a simple way to look at it here. The peasants worked for the knights, the knights worked for the nobles, and the nobles worked for the king. And the king owned everything. But the king gave land to the nobles, and the nobles gave land to their knights or vassals, and the, the knights and vassals allowed the peasants to work on their land, and they paid rent in the crops that they grew. Now, we'll be passing out some study guides, and you'll begin the chapter with a partner, and go through the readings and work out your study guide.